<laughs> well, hi there. I'm Carol Lutzinger, and you're watching Science Stuff. And yes, this is more stuff from my house and other sources. You might have noticed, well, there's a cup on there that I don't think came from your house. No, it came from the trash can, but we're going to use it today for part of what we're talking about. The other thing is I have a bag of stuff here and what is in the bag? Well, let's find out. First of all, think about what could be in the bag. It has to be something that will fit in the bag. Is it something that takes up all the whole bag or is it something that's just in the bottom of the bag? Is it heavy? Well, let's see. A little bit, but I can pick it up. And if you listened, you might hear some noises in that bag. So you know there's something science-y in this bag. And let's take a look and see what's here. Hmm. Well, cooking oil. What in the world are you doing with cooking oil, Mrs. Lutzinger? You're going to find out. And something maybe you've never seen before. Oh, something is leaking. Something is leaking. And how do I know? Because when I went to pick up something, it was ooshy, ooshy. So let's, <laughs> so you're gonna have to wait a minute to see what's here. This is something that my son-in-law gave to me when I was teaching um, fifth grade. And if you look very closely, what do you think that is? The first time I saw it, I thought it was a giant Hershey Kiss. <laughs> Hershey Kisses are good, but that's not what's here. I will tell you that my son-in-law who gave me this was working at the time on an offshore drilling rig off the coast of Louisiana in the Gulf of Mexico. And they were drilling for oil. That's right. And this is a sample of the oil that their drilling rig was working on. Drawing it up like a giant straw from down below the earth surface under the water of the Gulf of Mexico so they could make fuel and other products. Did you know plastic comes from oil? It does. So here is a sample of oil. And does it look like you thought it would? I don't know. I don't know what you thought it looked like when it came up out of the ground, but that's one thing that's in the bag. Now this is one kind of oil, but we don't cook with it. We cook with this kind. And this kind of oil comes from veggies. It is vegetable oil. And we use that to make something good. But I'm not gonna make something good here today. We're doing science experiments that don't involve eating today. Down in the bag, what else is here? Something else that that son-in-law brought back for me because he knew I was teaching and having fun with kids. Now, I'm not gonna let you see what's in here yet, but it's something like this. And you can see that this is pretty big, right? Now, those offshore drilling rigs use a tool to drill that goes down through the water, down to the bottom where it's sandy and rocky, and they drill down and they drill down until they find a hidden pocket of oil. And the pressure from under all that water is terrible. And so what he did was take a styrofoam cup and put it in a submersible machine that would go down under the water and take pictures of whatever was down there and help them get their, their, drilling, their drilling rigs in the right place to do what their job was. And the pressure down there 
in that submersible made a cup this size become this size. That's why people who, who go swimming offshore, if they're going into deep water, they have to wear one of those diving suits and they're certainly not swimming, they're doing exploring. But imagine the amount of pressure that it took to crush a cup this size down to this size. So that's a career that you might think about. Not, not going down there and exploring on your own, but maybe controlling the robots that they use down there. Or uh, yeah, there's so many careers that we don't think about because we're in the classroom and we see police officers, we see fire, fire people, we see chefs, we see grocery people, we see lawyers and doctors and dentists and all of that. You may not think about working on an offshore drilling rig in something the size of several football fields, or maybe going out to the port of Brownsville and working as a welder building one of those. Just imagine the possibilities. So that's a couple of things that are in the bag, and I'm gonna put it back in here because I don't want it to get crushed. I really like having this. I've had this since, let's see, he wrote on here, June 28th, 1998. So I've had this a very long time. And I keep it in this little container so it doesn't get crushed. But there's more stuff in the bag. And it has to do with what this is and something else. Ah, uh, here's some food coloring. What in the world are we gonna do today, Mrs. Letzinger? Hang on, we're almost through. Now you may have seen toys like this for sale in the mall. And I'm just gonna let it sit here and do its thing. And, and, it, and I'm gonna flip it over because it did its thing already. And then we're gonna do our thing. So watch how the red color comes down like little balls and globs and pools at the bottom. And it comes down each one of those little slanty structures inside the container. And the red is not mixing with the clear, with the transparent clear, with no color at all. So nothing else in the bag except a bit of trash, which we don't need to worry about. And to do this, I am going to wear some gloves because I do not want red or blue fingers. And I might have red or blue fingers. Because <laughs> no matter how careful I am with food coloring, I usually end up with it on me. So, and if you see our little toy there is still going, and it's just kind of fun to watch that kind of stuff. You may have a lava lamp that you, that you like to play with, and that's just one of those other things. So. Here is my clear container, and I am going to pour some of this cooking oil in there. And I'm using the tray so I don't make a mess on our tablecloth. Our poor tablecloth gets so much stuff on it. So there's my cooking oil. I'm gonna put the lid on it, because you know me, I'm liable to take an arm and fling it out and have cooking oil all over the studio floor. And I'm gonna move this down, because I might knock that off. And so now let's put some cooking oil in here and see what happens. Now remember, when a scientist is saying, I wonder what will happen if I do whatever, you have to think, what do you think is going to happen when I add food coloring to this container of cooking oil? Is it going to dissolve? Is it going to swirl around inside? Is it going to explode? <laughs> I hope not. Let's see what happens. So we're going to put a few drops of food coloring in the oil. And see what happens. And Hmm, boy, I hope I don't make a mess here. <laughs> I really hope I don't make a mess. So let's get this up here and see what we're doing. I am noticing something. And 
and I'm noticing that there's some little teeny tiny teeny tiny teeny tiny like the period at the end of a sentence on the surface of the oil and I'm going to get out of the way and let our camera buddies see if they can get up close enough to show it to you. Let me move out of the way. Now, just for curiosity's sake, I'm wondering what happens when I pour this into here. I wonder if the spheres are going to stay or if they're going to blend. I don't know. Let's get our hypothesis and let's see what happens. Wow. Now, I still have some here in the glass that collected on the bottom of the glass. but. All the little spheres are now here in the glass. And if you see, some of them are collected on the side and they're suspended in the liquid. Now, if you wanted to try this at home, please ask your family if it's OK, because you may use the last of the cooking oil that they were planning to use to cook your supper. And you don't want to do that. And I don't, I just think this is pretty neat. And when the light's shining through here, I see lots and lots and lots of little tiny red beads, little spheres. And I can also, from my point of view, I see the spectrum. Do you remember the spectrum? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And I wish I could show that to you because that is really, really cool. But that is something that you can try at home and hold it up to a bright light and see what you see. You never know what you're going to see with your two best science tools, your good eyes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Science Stuff. Bye for now.